Hello and welcome to Off Your Audit, the show where you get a sneak peek into the creative process and minds of your favorite writer. Today, our special guest is, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself in your book? Uh, my name is Dr. David Gregory, and uh, my name of my book is, is called Dominance Book One, Jewels. Uh, there's a second book called Dominance Book Two, uh, Turning Point, and there's a third book in, in the process. Wonderful. Thank you so much for coming on today. So we're going to start with some warm-up questions. And I was wondering if you could tell the audience a little bit about yourself and uh, just where you grew up and your environment when you were growing up and just kind of what led you to the point that you're at. Well, there's not a lot to tell. Uh, I, was, I was actually born in Indiana, but at a young age, my parents moved to a place called California, uh, to Fresno, California, which is kind of right in the center of the state, mm -hmm. which was a great place to be, to, to be raised as a, as a teenager because you, uh, you're in 90 minutes, you can go through the coast, you can be in the floor of Yosemite Valley. Uh, so there's a number of things that you can do, like giving a car. Uh, by the time I was 18 years old, I had uh, 10 years experience working in a gas station uh, that my father owned. And um, I started at eight years old. And uh, <clears throat> so I worked hard. Um, I went to school. Uh, I was, uh, I planned just to go to the local uh, uh, college and the counselor got me in. Looked at my scores, SAT scores and says, we'll try someplace else. And so she had me apply for this place called Stanford University, which I'd never heard of before. but. Uh, so I applied and was, was accepted with a scholarship. And so <clears throat> I went to Stanford for four years. Got my PhD, I got my bachelor's in physics there and then went on to the uh, University of California in San Diego, UCSD, and there I got my PhD in physics. Uh, my thesis topic was superfluid helium, so it's kind of neat. Uh, then I, I went to work in the aerospace industry, and I worked for uh, many years uh, building satellites that look down at various things. And um, during this time, I became quite accomplished at technical writing. But after I retired, I decided that it would take a, I, I wrote one non-fictional book and that was all right and not a lot of fun. And I said, well, I'll try writing a novel. And, and so I did. And it took a, it, it's a quite a transition from technical writing to writing as a novelist uh, yeah. because it, the emphasis is very different. Uh, technical writing, you want to be very clear and precise. And writing as a novelist, you want to kind of paint a picture with words is a better way of looking at it. And uh, so it, it took me a couple of years and several tries to get there, but I finally did and was able to publish the book and publish the second one. So. Wow. Well, what's a fact about you that nobody would guess? I said about me that no one would guess. One, I'm an intro introvert. Uh, two, I'm very persistent. Mm -hmm. um, oh, also, I don't want to guess that I have seven children and 28 grandchildren. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I come from a large family too, so. Oh. <laughs> And that's where becoming storytellers, telling stories to my kids and grandkids. So that's that's encouraged me to get into writing novels. I love telling love telling stories and helping them to have fun with that. So, so who was your role model, kid, and why? Who's my role model? Hmm, that's actually a complicated question. Uh, my role model probably growing up was my dad uh, because he was very persistent and my mother because she was very smart and uh, logical. And uh, So those two were kind of my guiding lights in my early years. You said that it was, it was kind of difficult. Did you have anybody in your later life that kind of was your role model or was it just, just your parents? No, my later life I kind of captain my own ship, if you will. Uh, mm -hmm. I knew what I wanted to do and I went about doing it. And, uh, um, so 
when okay so generally when people are in school their teachers would be like I mean like specifically kindergarten there's a lot of teachers that are like oh well you can be anything what you want that you want to be when you grow up you could be a ballerina or a doctor uh what did you want to do when you grew up and did you end up pursuing those dreams at all well my from the time that I can remember going to school my dad at the time worked in the coal mines in Indiana and my mother said I want you I says I don't care what you do but I want you to wear a suit when you go to work and uh, so that was kind of my my mantra as I was was training. So we're going to transition into more uh, like like about your book. Uh, could you give us a little bit of background as to where you got your ideas and just like what the the plot of the book is like? Well, I got my ideas. Uh, I guess within myself, I wanted to do a couple things. I wanted to, uh, to write a, a, a book about uh, a young, a young people, a young couple. I wanted mm -hmm. them to be in a situation where they had to, were challenged and were, were going to do something important. I wanted mm -hmm. the book to be, have a little fantasy in it. I wanted to have a little romance in it. I wanted to have a little adventure in it. And so I kind of mixed all those together and developed the characters. And as I often tell uh, other people, the characters begin to write the book. Begin to develop the characters, and, and actually, the characters begin to write the story in a sense, uh, because they have to act the way they are. And so, as as you you, know, you have a kind of a general structure for them to work in, and then they kind of fill in the details as they go. Yeah, and it's kind of fun. So, so you, we write the story together. <laughs> so you said that you, your plot kind of like happened, and the characters happened. Uh, was there was there any characters that happened before the plot or would uh, was the development of your second and uh, third book different than like when you wrote your first book? So uh, with your second and third, did you have the characters come first or? Well, the first book, I, I, it was a, I was a nonfiction book, so it didn't have characters. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the second book, the, the, the book Jules, we're talking about dominance, book one Jules. Uh, Actually, the characters kind of came first, and then the, the plot sort of followed. I wanted to have it, like I said, have a little bit of adventure, and so I had to have something for them to to, to have on an adventure. I had to create a, a world in which it was that was possible, and so I tried to do that, uh, and yet not not be like anybody else. And so that that's that's different. Does writing energize energize or exhaust you? Oh, it energizes me. I get writing, I use gloss, I, I'll, I'll, I'll write for hours. No, I love to write, so. If you don't like to write, don't be an author. <laughs> because that's what you do. <laughs> so going off of that, do you have any advice for new writers? Yeah, if you don't like to write, don't write. If you do like to write, then write. And don't be discouraged. And don't worry about the fact that the your, your first story may sound like a first grader wrote it. Just keep writing and, and keep learning and you'll learn. Take, don't be afraid to take criticism. Uh, the only, only kind of criticism that you should not take is when somebody tells you you're no good. Just forget about that. But ask them when they say, well, I don't like what this character's doing or I don't like how you did that or I don't like how you did that. Fine, take that all in and make the changes you feel good to you. And you'll, you'll begin to develop your own style. And once you do that, you'll begin to have your own confidence. And <clears throat> then it won't matter what people say. You'll, you'll just write for yourself. Write for yourself and have fun. And that's what you should do. So writing for yourself, is, I, I understand that it's super important. But uh, I know that writer's block is also like a, a huge part of writing. Did you face writer's block? And what were some ways that you were able to, like, if, if you did face it, uh, what were some ways that you were able to get yourself back on track? Well, that's interesting because so far I have not faced writer's block. Part of the secret there is you let the characters do the writing to some <laughs> extent. So sometimes I'm just typing down what they tell me. So, mm -hmm. so but uh, I'm, you know, what you do is you have an idea of what you want to happen and then write about it. I, I, don't, I don't understand people have writer's block, but then I've never had it, so I don't know. 
So do you struggle to write like at, at, like at all at any point? Have you struggled to write? And uh, did you have any points that you felt like you were just like writing into a hole and you had to go back and edit and find your way around it? Well, uh, you've asked two questions. Uh, oh, sorry. No, that's all right. The first question was, no, I, I don't struggle to write. I haven't, haven't had difficulties doing that. But two, what I will find sometimes is I will write myself into a hole or I'll write myself into a direction I don't like and I just chuck it and start over it from that, from, and take a different direction. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, 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 if you write a, 100 pages, you probably I probably have 400 pages that's been tossed in a sense. <laughs> Well, that's a that's a really good ratio, and I think uh, that's that's a wonderful thing to to just like expose about writing in general. Because I feel like a lot of writers feel like they need to just get everything on the first try, and they they try and be perf perfectionists about it in sort of a sense. So, and I mean, like even coming from my own writing experience, I I can understand how that how bad that that struggle of having to throw everything out and then going back to it, um, but. Coming back from from that pit, um, is there anything that uh, like what specifically did you end up editing out of your book? And if you could put anything back in that you edited out, what would it be? I wouldn't put anything back in that I edited out because I took it out for reasons. But <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, I would I would have the characters end up doing things I didn't like or didn't think. That, fit where I wanted the story to go or something like that. I would just take the section and dump it and just start over with that section. And, and since I like to write, that's not, a, I mean, I have fun writing. It doesn't make me tired. It energizes me. So I don't mind rewriting stuff. Um, but what bothers me is if I write something I like, and I mean, I'm a, I'm a obsessed about backing things up. I mean, I back myself up two or three times because I hate writing something I really like and to lose it. It just drives me nuts because I, I can't, it's hard for me. I can't even, I, don't, I got the word, I don't even try to recreate it, just start over. Um, but I hate losing that because I feel like it's, it's just, and that's happened a couple of times and I started backing things up like game busters. So I have a thumb drive and a cloud and a computer and stuff like that. So, so one of the things I back things up, I really write back it up on uh, and uh, just, just, just because you'll be glad someday. Um, so, what's your schedule it's like writing a book? Do you write kind of free form, or are you very strict about your your writing? Uh, I'm not strict about it. Uh, I usually, I mean, I got a lot of things going on, so I usually have to squeeze it in. But it's hard to find a block of uh, three or four hours, and which turns to five or six sometimes. But I, every time I get a chance, I'll sit down and write because, uh, I, uh, like I said, I have fun doing it. And so <laughs> it's fun to do that. And, and that's the one nice thing about writing for fun. Uh, and not because, now if you write it, if you're in school and you're writing an essay or writing something for somebody else uh, about a subject you may or may not like, that's hard, that's hard writing because uh, that's work. And it's not always fun. But when you're writing a novel, it's all you. And so you can do what you want to do. It's fun. It is for me. So I have a, a quick side question. Do you feel like you and your main character would get along? Of course. Otherwise, I'd change her. <laughs> no, we get along. <laughs> All right. So we're going to transition into some more. The, like fun questions so what do you like to do when you're not writing think about writing think about stories uh, you're, you're happy, but I really do uh, mm -hmm. beyond that I, I mean there's I don't have any of the hobbies if that's what you're asking writing is kind of my hobby um, I have a lot to do there's a lot of interaction with grandkids and, and with kids and family and things like that so that keeps you busy uh, at one level or another uh, mm -hmm. doing things around the house that, that kind of fall into my honeydew list keeps me pretty busy. So mm -hmm. it's. What three words do you feel describe you best? Three words describe you best. Mm -hmm. uh, persistent. 
maybe smart, maybe a little bit shy. Well, is there a, a reason why behind the, the persistent one? Just curious. Why the persistent? Mm-hmm. Well, again, I learned a long time ago. There was a saying I said, uh, I don't like, I, I don't have it handy right now with me, but uh, I usually have it on my office wall. It talks about persistence and how persistence can overcome everything. It can be genius, it can be skills, it can be no matter what, persistence will be everything at the end of the day. So persistence became a mantra for me as I grew up, and I was very persistent in things. And it worked for me well. Uh, if you could invite three people to dinner, living, dead, fictional, or real, who would they be and why? Three people to dinner. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, I would, I would probably like to invite... Uh, I would like to invite uh, Albert Einstein. I would have several questions to talk to him about. Mm-hmm. I would like to uh, invite, I think, Abraham Lincoln and maybe George Washington. Interesting. All right. If you could read one book over and over again for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? It would be titled Dominance, Book One, Jewels, because I love it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh. I actually have read it several times. Um, if you could eat one food for the rest of your life, what would it be and why? Oh, beef steak. Because I like it. I'm a carnival. So all those cows in your lot down there are in trouble if I'm around. <laughs> if you could instantly learn any skill, what would it be? Instantly learn any skill. Hmm. I guess I would like to learn languages. I would like to learn to speak uh, Japanese or Chinese or Arabian or something like that. Mm -hmm. Instantly. If you were an animal, what would you be and why? That's a strange question. I guess I would be a tiger uh, because tigers are are lone animals. Mm -hmm. Uh, They're persistent. Uh, they're very good at what they do, and people have a lot of respect for them. What would you like to be known for? Being a good husband, and being a good father. That's really sweet. Um, there are now 25 hours a day. How do you spend that extra hour? Writing. <laughs> what else? So- the last set of questions that I have for you is quick fire, which is don't think, just answer. Deep sea or outer space? Outer space. Spring, summer, fall, or winter? Fall. Salty or sweet? Sweet. Day or night? Day. Pancakes or waffles? Waffles. Chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Coca-Cola or Pepsi? Oh, Coke. Hamburgers or hot dogs? Oh, hamburgers. Fruit or vegetables? Fruit. Gold or silver? Gold. Ketchup or mustard? Mustard. Sandals or sneakers? Uh, Sneakers. Milky Way or Snickers? Snickers. All right. Wonderful. Those are all the questions that I have for you. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Everything that you shared was truly inspirational and wonderful. And I, again, I, I really do appreciate you taking the time out of your day to sit down and share. Thank you. I really hope it comes across all right.